Hey, this is Flywire on the Road, and this is the first of the series of the UK. I mean, White Waltham Airfield. It's just on the edge of uh, Heathrow's airport traffic area. They're essentially their Class D out here, and but it is Class B. The airspace here is really, really quite uh, dense. But anyway, I'm going to take you on a little tour of White Waltham. Hey, I'm Scott Perdue, and this is uh, Today on Flywire. We're going to take a look at White Waltham Airfield. Uh, it's out just a little bit west and south of London's Heathrow, just in the outskirts of London on the west side. Sun's breaking out. It's been raining and spitting and stuff like that. Just got here to England today, and I did a little bit of flying here when I was stationed in the Air Force uh, way back when in the 90s. And wanted to come out because I remember this is such a cool place. Right behind me is the, uh, they have a little restaurant, a little cafe there. Uh, a lot of stuff going on here. They've got a whole bunch of uh, club airplanes. And they do an awful lot of training out of here. They've got a lot of grass runways here. And as you see, there's, uh, as we take a little tour of some of the stuff in the hangar, there's a lot of cool things. There's a Miles Messenger that's original from just after World War II. Uh, there's a, a Flincher. Uh, it's a... German biplane, little bitty single seater, uh, that's original as well. A uh, whole bunch of uh, uh, chipmunks and tiger moths and other things like that. And I found a uh, Hurricane, uh, two seat Hurricane, which is, uh, I don't believe they made those in World War II, but uh, uh, Hawker Restorations apparently has restored that. And Mike Collette uh, owns it here and keeps it here and flies it here out of uh, White Waltham. Really cool airplane, looks like an awful lot of fun. Uh, to fly. Anyway, this is a whole different uh, kind of uh, attitude and approach here at White Waltham, and it's just a, it's a club, and it's a social thing as well as a flying thing, and uh, I think that's pretty cool, and we probably ought to see more of that in the United States. So, anyway, hope you enjoy the tour. And I'm at White Waltham uh, Air, Airfield, which is the West London Aero Club, and it's just west of London, and it's a great grass strip, and we're going to take a little tour of this today. And I have David, Co, and Iona Morris. They're both uh, flight instructors here, and we're going to talk a little bit about White Waltham. David, how long have you been here? Um, I've been here for 22 years. Came in 1999. <clears throat> I, um, I was the chief instructor for a while. Um, and then I decided to move sideways, which is a great move. But I'm still here as a flight instructor. Great. And this is my work colleague. Iona, yeah, I've been here for 15 years. David has taught me everything I know. And I've been a flying instructor here for, gosh, two months. Two months? <laughs> two months. So you started flying here in the club, got your licenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And eventually got your CFI. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not CFI. My flying instructor. Yeah, it's okay. different. CFI we call it, um, in America, it's CFI, we call it FI. Yeah. 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 But there it's the same thing. Same yeah. Thing. yeah. There it's certified. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. I we are, we've yeah. got a piece of paper to say we can do it. Exactly. Yeah, the FAA calls that a certificate. Yeah. Ah. So it's different. Yeah, different system. But yeah. Same idea. Same idea. And we call them certificates and ratings and we split them yeah. up. But uh, you guys actually split them up more than we do. Probably. Oh, we, yeah. oh, we like the complicated things. Yeah. 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 We do complicated things. Yeah. So, we so we're running a, a PPL school um, and the reason why this is very successful is that we've only um, really specialized in all matters to do with the PPL so we don't do commercial training here so it's a home for private pilots so we do um, PPLs, night ratings, uh, tail wheel, uh, complex, um, and with some instrument flying uh, we don't do the full IR, but we do something called the IRR, which is like a half IR, but it works in this ca in in this country. Yeah, the restricted. Yeah, restricted. Range, restricted IR, which restricts yeah. you in altitude yeah. and weight. Yeah, slightly. Yeah, there's some rules rules about it. Uh, we do a lot of aerobatic training here, um, but and some of that's on the school. Um, 
We've got some vintage aircraft here now, we've got some Hurricanes, two Hurricanes in fact, and we've got a lot of aerobatic airplanes. So it's a pretty active place when it's not raining. <laughs> Which it does anyway. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Thanks to the IRR. So, David, you're telling me that uh, uh, you were a teacher. Yeah. And then retired and then came here to, to teach as well. Yeah. So you're not done teaching. But... Uh, I gave up teaching. I gave up teaching. Um, got an opportunity to do this full time. So this is not really a job. It's like a hobby that you get paid for. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? How did you get involved in this? Uh, I wanted to fly from a very young age and then I had a trial lesson with David all of 15 years ago and after that he just kept encouraging me to keep progressing uh, with all my different skills and we did the IRR together and yeah and David's involved in a Saturday brunch club where it's a bunch of PPLs we all get together and we go flying and then we go somewhere and have lunch and then somewhere else for tea and cake and then we come back here and through that i built my skills and my confidence and ta -da, there you are. I am now. Yeah, that's awesome yeah so two months as an instructor um what 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 part of instructing do you really like oh i'm just curious oh def um, most of it in general the fact that i can impart my knowledge now and share the love with the flying you know what's not to like about flying it gets oh, the yeah. Pinch myself, even now I have to pinch myself. I can't believe I'm able to do this. And I think if we get more people flying, then it keeps the airfields open and it keeps the airspace open. Yeah, the key is, is getting people in to flying and mm. keep coming in because you got to keep people going because yeah. eventually we age out. Yeah. But, uh, but how about you, David? What is it? Obviously, you've made fun, teaching a career. What is it you like about teaching? Um, well, it's very rewarding when you get somebody through a license who mm. starts with nothing and a few hours later you get them a license, which is great. Um, like Aona, I like being in the sky. Mm -hmm. It's a natural place to be. Um, it's, I think it's a pilot thing, really. Yeah, and you, you, you were a pilot, so you understand what we're talking about. Being up there is a good place to be. It is, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I love flying. Yeah. I actually live on an air park and... Uh, so I live with my airplanes. We actually, we've lived in a one air park uh, for 22 years. I just sold, we just sold our house and hangar and we're building a new uh, a new place. And what it is, is just a big metal box with an apartment in it. Mm -hmm. So we're moving closer to the airplanes. They're not in the backyard yeah. now, they're yeah. in the front porch. In the front porch, so. yeah. yeah, we do have a good relationship with our neighbors. But obviously that's quite an important point. Mm -hmm. um, we are quite busy. Also, we live inside the Heathrow Control Zone. Yeah. So there's some rules, but if you learn to fly here, you wouldn't really know that. Yeah. Because you know, you just learn, you just, just grow up with Heathrow. It just being is what it is here. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So, so yeah. How much traffic do you get from other people in the UK coming? Um. Well, because we're in the control zone, not as much as maybe some other places do. Um, but people who know us come in. Um, we, some, sometimes we might have 10, 15 planes visiting on a particular day. The other great thing about this aerodrome, we haven't got air traffic control. So we've got the lowest form of control, which is called air ground in this country. Um, and it works pretty well. The pilots talk to each other. And the, obviously the office gives out the basic information like runway and the Q&H and so on. Um, but uh, other places locally would be a bit more controlled. So sometimes it can get quite interesting here, but it generally speaking works really well. Mm. We're, right, we're right next to the busiest airport in the country. Right. <laughs> and they allow us to fly by certain rules, which obviously we don't break. And as long as we stick to those rules, we can operate air ground radio right in, the in the control zone, yeah. which is remarkable. Well, I think it's remarkable. Yeah, yeah I think it's yeah. remarkable. It's amazing. And, uh, how long has White Wallen been here? Well, I think it's 1936, but um, some of the literature says slightly earlier, but I'm, I'll, I'll go with 36. <laughs> yeah, Pre-Second World War. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an RAF field? Back it back. was during the war, yeah. Yeah, it was the, ho the home of the ATA. The tra really, transport? It, the, it's the, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the ATA, the, 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 
Transport Auxiliary Organisation, yeah? um, and they had a number of pilots that flew out of here in air taxis uh, every day, and they took them up to factories where they picked up a Spitfire, let's say, to take it to a squadron. Because at the beginning of the war, they ran out of pilots, because all the young men went to fight. But they couldn't get the planes moved around, so they, they came back into the private community. Um, so the uh, auxiliary were just private citizens with pilot licenses? Yeah, licenses. basically. And yeah, they gave them a uniform. I think it, yeah, I think it became a bit more organised, and they had a uniform. <clears throat> and there were quite a few women as part of it, and that's why this place is famous, because there were about 20 women pilots here, and they became the famous Spitfire women in World War II. Because originally, they didn't, they ran out of men, and then they said, um, somebody said, well, what, what about all these lady pilots? And originally, they said, no, we're not having women flying planes, and eventually they went, well, actually, no, we ran out of pilots now. <laughs> So they started off with some English pilots, and then, then the, some pilots came from America, mm -hmm. South America, South, South yeah. Africa. So these, these lady pilots were, actually came from all over the world in the end. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Polish ladies yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of how our WASP and Women Air Service Yeah, same story, yeah. yeah started. So if you, if you research it, there'll be some American barnstorming pilots who came over here to fly in the World War II. Mm -hmm. Inter interesting. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of American history in this country, as you well yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Loads of American bases all over the place. Yeah, it's fascinating. Which is interesting, yeah. yeah. So the majority of the traffic here is training with the, these warriors out here. Well, there's a, I think there's about 150 airplanes here. Yeah. Um, we've got some hangars, you know, fortunately they don't all go flying at the same time. <laughs> Um, we've got helicopters here now, um, so it works really well. Um, so the club has actually owns 15 aeroplanes, and we run the flight school with those 15 aeroplanes. So the rest are privately owned. Um, it works really well. Okay. Some are in the hangars, some are not, and the membership is thriving. Yeah. I think we've got uh, 1,400 members. That's huge. Yeah, not yeah. all of them are pilots, some are social members. Mm -hmm. And we do talks here, uh, music here, um, weddings here. <laughs> funerals? Funerals here. We don't do funerals, we do wakes here. Wakes. <laughs> There's always something going on. And even people bring their laptops and sit down to do a day's work. But that's not going to happen because there's always somebody to talk to. And everyone's so keen to impart their knowledge and their experiences. So you won't be bored. Yeah. There's always some camaraderie going on. That's what I like about this yeah. about this place is it's a, it's a it brings flying and socializing yeah. together in a whole in a way that I like I said earlier is it's just didn't happen. Yeah. Some some of the members refer to it as the time sucker. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. It sucks time out time out of you, yeah. away from you. So on a day like today, where we, we're not doing an awful lot of flying because of the thunder and lightning and the storms, um, you might arrive for your lesson at ten o'clock in the morning, and you'll still be here at four o'clock in the afternoon, chatting and socialising and planning your next trip. Yeah. Yeah, we've just had some extensions put on the building, so we've got some better facilities now for ground school. Nice. So we're doing quite a lot more ground school now, aren't we? Well, we've always done ground school, but it's a bit more organised in classrooms mm -hmm. than it was before. So tell me how it is to get your licence, your private pilot licence here in the UK. About 45 hours, hard graft, it's quite a commitment, it's not the cheapest country in the world to do your PPL. I think in the States it's probably a, an awful lot cheaper because of the fuel prices. And then you have to contend with the weather as well. So it can take people anything between six months, possibly three years. And it depends how often they can fly and how much they can commit to flying. And then of course we've got various rules of having a medical and air law exams before you can do your first solo. So how, you have to take a, a lot of different we call them written nine. tests, nine different tests. Yeah, nine written tests, yeah. multiple choice. But we, we run ground schools here. Yeah. And we've got such a wealth of really highly qualified instructors that if, if I don't know the answer, I'll come to David and say, I've got a student with a question I couldn't answer. 
there's always somebody here that's you know that you can tap into to get answers from and help. That's great. So once you uh, are these nine um, exams are they proctored by some other entity and you have to pay for the exam? Or? Yeah, there's um, you have to join, you have to register with the CAA, which is like the FAA, um, and then uh, you get a password, etc., and you just do it on a laptop. Um, but so we have to supervise it. But so some of them, so you have to pay them for it, and. I think we may take a small amount for setting it up, something like that. So it's it's that's got slightly more expensive, but it's it's, it's become it's mainly because it's had to become more organised. Right. Because you know when, when we had paper, you know life was easy, but sometimes computers make life more complicated. I thought they were supposed to make things easier. Well, <laughs> who knows? So I used to say to people like, if you can fly once a week for a year. You should get a license, so we're talking 52 hours, right? So we sell 45, that's the package we sell, but it would be rare. I th yeah, we, we're getting some licenses just over 45 hours, but they're pretty dedicated students. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, ability, it's ability, isn't it? It's, it's a number of things coming together. Yeah, it's a number of things. And one, one, when I tell people that are talking about getting their license, I, I said the best thing for you to do is fly three times a week. Yeah, exactly right. Commit yeah. to fly three times yeah, a week. Yeah, Because then you're not, you're not going to relearn. Because if you fly once a week, well, then part of your yeah. lesson's going to be relearning what you lost, yeah. what you did last time. And the syllabus is the same as the FAA syllabus. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be one or two quirky differences mm -hmm. in our, in either syllabus, but I mean, basically, an airplane is an airplane, isn't it? Yeah. Navigation might be a bit different in America. Um, we're a bit more cluttered here with controlled airspace in this part of London. Lots of, lots uh, of airspace here. Yeah, lots of airspace here. So it appears quite daunting when you first look at it. But you just get used to it, don't you? Well, thank you so much for uh, filling me in a little bit yeah, about yeah, what flying like very is here. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Very, very pleased to meet you, yeah. Very interesting to meet an interesting pilot. <laughs> well, thanks, <I'm> right. <laughs> and you look forward to seeing the results and you're following your trip around the UK. Well, thanks. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, David. Well okay, done, well you. Well, that's a quick tour of uh, White Waltham, and uh, uh, just wanted to show you what it's like out here. It's pretty cool. And maybe you should come over here and do a little bit of flying. They do stuff. Uh, they'll take you up for a little flight, stuff like that. It's a cool place to visit, and it's a great place to get reoriented to uh, the time zone because you get here early enough in the day, you can come out here and knock around a little bit. Hope you enjoyed the tour, and I'll see you next time at the next place on Flywire.